Hi, this is Sharon Renhack, BCAT practice coach and editor of the Aphasia Toolbox newsletter. Today I'm interviewing three of the recently graduated BCAT Aphasia practice coaches. We have Jenna DeVerry, Mara Sofer, and Aaron St. Meyer. Guys, before we get started with the main questions, tell me how you became interested in aphasia and aphasia recovery. Jenna? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Jenna. I became interested in aphasia recovery um, in my undergraduate coursework. Uh, I obtained a bachelor's in speech and hearing science, so that's when I was first introduced to aphasia. Uh, and then a friend of mine uh, had a brother who had a stroke and had remembered I had an interest in that, um, and I began working with him, and that's where it all began. That's great. Thank you, Jenna. Erin, uh, what about you? Well, I actually started working for the Aphasia Center of Innovative Treatment as the business manager and um, started seeing some clients come into the office and build, you know, treating them and became interested in what I could do to maybe help them practice a little bit more and just get a little bit more involved because I really did start bonding with some of the clients, and when Bill gave me the opportunity to take a course and become certified, I obviously, you know, took him up on that offer and ever since have been performing the uh, practice coach program. Very good. Thank you, Aaron. Mara, what about you? Uh, I, well, I've been interested for four years now. I, I um, have a website for um, stroke resources, people have had strokes, and my brother had a stroke about four years ago, so um, I've been working with him for about four years and became very interested uh, in aphasia and how to help people recover, and um, that's why I'm here. Very good. About what it was like taking the BCAD practice coach course. Uh, Jenna? Um, yeah, the BCAT course was great. Uh, it was a great learning environment to be able to log in to my computer in the comfort of my own home or wherever I may have been at the time the course was taking place. Um, and it was just a really great place to be able to bounce ideas off of both yourself, who's had a stroke and been through the experience, um, and also Bill, who's worked with several people who have had strokes. Um, and then also other people who are passionate about helping others who have had strokes. So it was a great environment to be able to learn not only from you guys who are facilitating the course, but also the others who are taking the course. Thanks, Jenna. Erin? Mm-hmm. For me, the course was very educational as I don't have uh, – my education is in the sciences, um, so for me – taking the lead into this whole new world of aphasia. It was extremely educational, interesting, and I also found it fun. Um, you know, we laughed a lot, and I, as I was learning, I was able to sit back, just like Jenna had said, and, and enjoy learning and enjoy experience the experiences from you, from Bill. And I felt it was a very positive environment, the course, um, I, I learned a lot about me, about others, about your experience and Bill's experience with aphasia patients as well. Um, so I, I, I thought it was a very comfortable environment. I felt very comfortable just asking questions if I didn't understand something. Um, it was, I felt that it was okay to ask any question. No question was a dumb question, so to speak. So I thought it provided a very positive, comfortable educational environment for myself. Thanks, Erin. Mara? I agree with Erin. I think it was fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the environment was really comfortable. Uh, it, uh, I liked being able to connect with people from all over the country. Uh, there were about six of us, and... Uh, from all walks of life, everybody had different majors. There were several people who had, uh, who are majoring in speech language pathology, um, and some who are business majors and so. But did you find any of the information a little overwhelming to you? 
I, coming obviously from a different background, I didn't feel that the content was overwhelming. I felt that there was a lot of information. However, the information was explained so thoroughly that I was able to understand it and I was okay with that. I, I will admit when I first came into the program, I was very apprehensive and I was a little anxiety ridden because I was thinking, can I do this? And being that that wasn't my background, uh, aphasia is not my background, SLP is not, I, I don't have title. So I was apprehensive, but once I went through the, through the first course, I became more confident in what I was learning and being able to understand the content. I became more confident and, you know, you explained it so well and Bill and his examples and the uh, slideshow and everything was able to really help me visualize what was going on and, and have a better understanding. So I thought it was a lot of information, but it was not overwhelming. Um, if anything, I found the concepts a little bit overwhelming uh, just because I thought, wow, like all of this has to happen in order for us to talk. <laughs> uh, so a lot of that was um, just an eye-opening experience for me, and I thought it was great to kind of allow us um, a little bit of insight what people who are relearning to talk actually have to go through in order to get there. So I thought it was great. Thank you, Jenna. Question two, was there one thing that stood out in your mind with this program? <laughs> Jenna? Um, well, two things specifically uh, stand out in my mind. I think one uh, is the passion uh, that comes from both yourself and Bill. Um, so as the facilitators of this course, um, you know, I could just, it was really reflective in how the course was planned, how you guys answered questions, how the content was delivered, um, you know, the resources that you gave us. Uh, just the passion that you guys have in wanting to help people who do have aphasia. And uh, for me, that was really inspiring. So that was the number one thing I would say that stood out. Um, and secondly is the resources that you guys provided us. So not only aphasia toolbox, um, but also other resources and just vocabulary that you gave us to look up for us to learn more and kind of be able to go beyond um the basics and how you allowed us to um, or how you taught us how to navigate the resources. So uh, as someone who looked at a phaser toolbox initially, I thought, OK, there's all this stuff that I can help someone who's had a stroke with, but I have no idea what any of it means or how to use it. Uh, so that really was, um, I think, what I benefited most from in the course was um, learning how to maximize the resources so people who are recovering can actually use them to assist them in recovering. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. That was a great answer. Thank you. Erin, what about yourself? Uh, what stood out most to me was, I'm going to have to go with what Jenna said, was the information. And when I go on to the aphasia toolbox site, you know, I see all these modules, I see these exercises, and I was thinking the same thing. Wow, how am I going to use these as tools to practice with certain clients and find out what their needs are? So my big thing was I was able to have a better understanding of how the exercises worked as well as how do I fit that into my client's needs. And that was really important for me so that I'm able to always kind of be ahead of the game with my clients and try different things and use these tools effectively. The main thing that stu stuck out to me was about the aphasia plateau mess, um, which is, if you don't know, I know Jenna and Aaron and Sharon know, but is uh, uh, that at some point people who have aphasia hit a wall and that they can't learn past that wall. And what I learned in the program is that is completely and totally f false, that it doesn't matter if it's been a month, two years, three years, four years after a stroke, that people can continue to learn and people can continue to improve their language and and there's no stopping point and that is so important to me and it's so important I think to convey 
to the people that you work with that you can constantly learn. You can constantly reconnect those pathways and, and, and learn how to speak again. And, and that's so important because, um, I think, you know, when doctors, well, I don't want to point any names, but when people say that somebody with aphasia can't learn past a certain point, I think that's just devastating and it's not true. And, uh, I, I really, I really would like to promote that, you know, through my coaching that, you know, there's, you can learn years after. How Guys, the, the, the third and last question is, are you working with anyone right now? Jenna? <clears throat> uh, yes, I currently am working with someone. Um, I'm working with a man who had a stroke a little over two years ago. Um, and I've been working with him for about two years. Uh, so when the practice coach program came along, I thought, wow, I've been kind of doing this without really knowing I've been doing this for a while. Um, and then I got all these new resources and tools. So it's been great. And um, he has improved his speech tremendously. And to be part of that um, has been really inspiring to me. And uh, he is one of the most motivated individuals I have ever met. He will not give up and he will keep trying and is willing to try anything new um, that he needs to do to learn how to speak what how he wants to speak again. Um, so that is what I'm doing. And I, I began working with him because of the plateau myth. Um, you know, two years ago, he went to a speech therapist. He worked with the speech therapist for three months, four months after his stroke, and they said, sorry, you're not going to get any better. Um, and so that's when his sister contacted me and asked if I would, you know, practice as a conversation partner with him and be willing to help him out. And I've been doing it ever since. And let me tell you, since I started with him two years ago, I could not understand most of what he said, and now he can formulate an entire sentence. So it's been very eye-opening Um to the plateau myth for me. <laughs> Jenna, thank you. Um, I, I noticed when I was on uh, with the cafe the other other week um, that Joe was actually, like you said, able to complete a full sentence, and I understood exactly what he was saying, so that was very good. So thank you for that. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> um, Aaron? Yes, I actually meet with a client um, every Thursday for about an hour, an hour and a half. And like I said, we're just getting our feet wet with the aphasia sight reader at this time. Uh, we were doing a lot of other things such as the iPad and the iPhone. But now that we have her all set up and, and navigating the iPhone and the iPad better, we're going to start working towards different exercises and, and such. And uh, she she just had her stroke January of 2013, so it's kind of, it's fairly new. And we're dealing with some other emotional issues, um, trying to hurdle that. But by practicing and meeting with her, you know, once a week, I can see that her motivation is starting to, you know, start going the other direction instead of down is going up a little bit more. And um, she's she's very excited when we meet to practice some things and to, you know, start using her iPhone or iPad better and to start using the exercises. She's very excited about that. Great. Thank you, Erin. Mara? Uh, yes, I've been working with uh, a gentleman who is 45 who had a massive stroke four years ago. Uh, Post-stroke, he could not speak, write, spell, read, nothing. And um, for about three and a half years, he did the traditional speech therapy, and he went to outpatient programs. And uh, then I met Sharon, you, Sharon Renhack, and uh, Bill Connors, uh, the uh, head of the aphasia program. And this was about six months ago, and the person I work with, is speaking so well, and this is three and a half years later, four years later, he's improved more in the past six months than he probably has in the past four years. Um, it's been amazing, and, and I'm not getting paid to say this. Um, he, uh, 
Uh, it takes patience. This doesn't happen overnight. Um, so I don't want to mislead anybody. You know, it, it's it, you know, people, the coaches and the client have to be patient and understand that they have to practice every day, a few hours a day, and whatever their extracurricular things are, whether it's speech therapy or outpatient treatment, you know, all of that combined um, really helps. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's been amazing. This program has been amazing. Um, that's all. Thank you, Mara. Guys, thank you. Thanks, Jenna, Jenna Mara, and Aaron for an informative and enjoyable interview. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.